Okay, so yesterday we were looking at uh, radiation loss, right? So the correct black body distribution was uh, proposed by Max Planck. Uh, his distribution is a theoretical distribution. It agreed exactly with the experiments. So in order to uh, make the theory agree with the experiment, it was necessary to move away from classical physics and then propose that d equal to h nu. So you go away from the classical physics and propose that energy transfers energy trans transfer takes place in multiples of h nu where h is not infinitesimally small tending to 0 h is a finite constant it is a fundamental constant of nature which is the Planck's constant which is 6.627 right into 10 to the power of minus 34 joule second then we look looked at the distribution this is the Planck's distribution monochromatic or spectral radiation intensity of black body in uh, in engineering radiation we would like we will call it as So that pi is taken care of that seridin will not come. So that is uh, E takes care of that solid angle all right. Now we did this in the last class. So we got this x equal to So let us use better uh, uh, values for C1 and C2. C1 will be actually okay. So I gave it as 1.45 to the power of 4 that was approximate. The actually it is 1 point. So this is called the first radiation constant, this is called the second radiation constant okay. So uh, lambda max t is That explains why as the temperature increases, the lambda max decreases. Okay, so this is the Wien's displacement law. So you can also look at the color temperature emission spectra and try to figure out the temperature from that and so on that comes from this. So the Wien's displacement law yesterday we worked out a problem where I gave you the maximum uh, uh, what is that lambda max for solar radiation I gave it as 0.475. 475 we found that the color temperature to be 6100 Kelvin the distribution of radiation from the sun does not exactly correspond to a black body is this thing therefore there is a minor difference 
actually the black body equivalent black body temperature the photosphere of the sun is about 5800 Kelvin. Now, what will happen if so this should give you the black body emissive power at a particular temperature. You all already know that it is equal to sigma t to the power of 4 which you are learning from high school. So, let us see whether we can do something to derive this from the Planck's distribution. Did we give some equation numbers yesterday? So, Wien's displacement law, what is the number? No numbers, huh? no number, huh? okay, just forget it. So, we will, uh, huh? was there a number? We, okay, this was 9, 10, 9, okay. Let us see 2 by lambda d b eta. Is this correct? Is that okay? I change the limits from 0 to infinity to infinity to 0 because the eta and this thing are eta is 1 by lambda then there was a minus I again change it to 0 to infinity I think we are doing fine. So, now is in the numerator is it correct? This is correct huh? huh? Okay.
is it fine? Huh? I think it should be fine. Now watch here. We are we are we are doing it only we are doing it only for a particular temperature. Okay. C1 is a constant can be pulled out. C2 to the power of 4 is a constant can be pulled out. T is a constant can be pulled out. Okay. So, this eta cube by e to the power of eta minus 1 d eta cannot be easily integrated, it is very tough. Hmm? We will introduce elliptic integrals and all that they have so x cos theta sin theta all that you have to do, but you can numerically integrate using Simpson's rule, trapezoidal rules, Gauss codes, Gauss quadrature whatever. It is known that it gives you a result of pi to the power of 4 by 15. Okay? If that is the case. So, this is nothing but now pull out your calculators and check for yourself whether you get a value of 5.67 into 10 to the power of minus 8 because this is your sigma the Stefan Boltzmann constant. Please pull out your calculators and check you know the value of C1, you know the value of C2, you know the value of pi 22 by 7, just check it out. But C2 may be in micrometer Kelvin, so convert it 10 to the power of minus 6, C2 to the power of 4 means 10 to the power of minus 24, all right, just check it. made it 10 to the power of minus 2 right it was 1.438 in 10 to the power of 4 micrometer but uh, micrometer is 10 to the power of minus 6 so it becomes minus 2 huh? Ravindra Chaitanya done 5.67 ok fine. watts per meter square per Kelvin to the power of 4. So, this is called the Stefan Boltzmann's law. This law was known much before Planck figured out the Planck's distribution because this has come from thermodynamics. From thermodynamics we can prove that the radiation, the emissive power of a black body is proportional to T to the power of 4. However, for getting the sigma you cannot get it purely from thermodynamics you require experiments. So, if you a t to the power of 4 if it is matched with the experience with the experiments that a will turn out to be 5.67 10 to the power of minus 8. However, if the Planck's distribution is also integrated with from lambda is equal to 0 to infinity it will result in the same value of 5.67 10 to the power of minus 8. Therefore, it further validates Planck's black body distribution function and this is called the Stefan Boltzmann's law and this is called the Stefan Boltzmann constant.
So, if you have 1 meter by 1 meter square, 1 meter square which is at 1000 Kelvin, it will have emissive power of 56,700 56, watts, 56.7 kilowatts, am I right? 5.6 and 10 to the power of minus 8 into 1000 is 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 12, so there will be 10 to the power of 4, so 5.6 and 10 to the power of 4, 56.7 and 10 to the power of 3, 56.7 into A is 1 meter square, 56.7 kilowatts. So, a 1 meter by 1 meter plate which is at 1000 Kelvin has a emissive power of 56,700 kilowatts. The, the solar constant, the solar radiation which is entering the earth that has got a power of 1353 watts per meter square on the equator on a clear day at 12 o'clock in the noon that is a value 1353 watts per meter square. Therefore, if you have a 1 meter square area, the maximum you can get is only 1.35 kilowatt. If it is cloudy and this thing you, you, you correct for altitude, latitude, blah, 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 all that. So, it will be much lower than that. Then take care of these rainy days and you take care of the evening and this thing and all that. And fine, it will be a non-zero value, but still, it <laughs> okay. Uh, but you will have to take into account all this. Fine. So, this, so we have derived the, both the laws from first principles. Now, it is time to solve some problems involving these, all right. Problem number 45, very good. So, we will hit half century very soon, huh? yes. Problem 45, calculate the equivalent black body temperature. Any doubt? Everything is clear? Mm. Anyway, for those people who are mathematically inclined, So, this is the algorithm for what is called the successive substitution method. You will start with the value of x, you can, let us say x equal to 3, you will say e to the power of 3 minus 1 by e to the power of 3 into 5 will be x i plus 1, that would not be 3. Then the new value again substitute, find the new value of x i plus 1 and keep on doing it till the left side and right side are very close to each other. So, this algorithm, so this is called the trial and error, this is called the successive substitution method. If you apply the method, you will get a value which is equal to 4.965. We already thulped it by saying that e to the power of x is much greater than 1 and therefore e to the power of x minus 1 and this can get cancelled, x is almost equal to 5, right. For those people who are very mathematically inclined, you asked this question yesterday, I am trying to answer this. You can solve it using this, it will turn out that the answer is 4.965, which will lead to 2898 micrometer Kelvin rather than 2900 micrometer Kelvin. Is that okay? So, this is called the successive substitution method. For the sake of completeness, somebody take the value of 4.965 and let us get reassured that right side and left side are x i is 4.965, x i pack it, okay, 4 point, very good. So, doubting Thomas's, put your doubts to rest, 4.965 is indeed the correct answer, all right. If you want it, if you want it to be threateningly, more threateningly formal, please go on, go ahead and use the newton raphson method, put it as f of x. Then x of i plus 1 is x of i minus f of x divided by f dash of x. Keep on iterating, okay. You will get the same answer 4.965. Okay, I got distracted. We are supposed to do problem 45, right? Problem 45 calculate the equivalent black body, calculate the equivalent black body temperature Te, okay.
calculate the equivalent black body temperature T E of the solar photosphere of the solar photosphere bracket outermost visible layer of the sun solar photosphere is the outermost visible layer of the sun based on the following information based on the following information the flux density of solar radiation the flux density of solar radiation the flux density of solar radiation reaching the earth fs just now i told you i told you 1353 i think is 1368 not not a big difference the flux density of solar radiation reaching the earth fs is 1368 watts per meter square the earth sun distance d and the radius of the solar photosphere the radius of the sun radius of the sun is 7 into 10 to the power of 8 meters if you have the flux density on the outer layer of the photosphere you are done right if you have the flux density on the outer layer of the photosphere then that flux density is equal to your sigma t to the power of 4 how do you have the flux density on the outer layer of the photosphere you know the flux density at a far off place and you know there is something called the inverse square inverse square law which is at work now use it you know the flux density at a far off distance so find the flux density as a at a lesser radius that's it venu you understood what was the distance no rs ah d ah what did i call it d what did i say earth ah earth ah fs no what did i call that no fs rs is it is correct or oh, missed it up is correct right divishri what is the problem huh yeah yeah no no wait wait what this is correct what is d distance and 
that I call it as the yes. uh, hmm. then this is correct now then is it okay yeah yeah what what is troubling you anusha what is it so it is going like this na so e is like this now we know the flux density here we want to find out the flux density here that's it sneha is it okay ha ah. so now tell me what is the f photosphere ha ah? sun okay see at this radius if it is having 1368 at this radius if it is having 1003 at this radius it will be much more what is that much more it is equal to sigma t to the power of 4 that's it ah so what is this <laughs> 1368 rs is what Ah, divided by ten power eleven. So you have photosphere. How much is that? Six point watts per meter square. Ah. No 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 T T yes yeah what is it all too low why what made you think so no no you may think many you think about many things but according to the values I gave is it correct or not. Okay, just hang on. We can check it. If I get five thousand eight hundred Kelvin, then it is correct. Huh? So let us see what the girls whether what the girls are saying is correct. Six point two eight. Six point two eight ten to the power of seven divided by sigma. Hold the power of yes. How much is it? Then it's fine. What is your problem? You kilowatt per meter square, not watt per meter square. Six point two ten percent kilowatt per meter square. Wait, no, no. I am also getting watt per meter square. What is the problem? Huh? It's watt only. Watt. Just check. Just check. Relax. It should be fine. Huh? Ah, so this is five. Okay, so we approximate usually to five thousand eight hundred. Okay. All right. So one thousand one thousand three sixty eight watts per meter square. It's possible for you to measure. So if you are able to measure the radiation falling on the Earth, and from astronomy, you get the Sun Earth distance. but somebody has to give you the measurement of the radius of the photosphere that somebody some physics people or some cosmology somebody is giving you based on this data it is possible for you to extrapolate or i can directly get from uh, emission from the emission spectra i can take sigma t to the power of 4 and figure out that it is 5770 so if the inversely we can work out if 5770 is correct and this temperature is correct and then you can actually work out the you can work out astronomy from radiation we can actually work out the distance if you know the radius and all that right okay anyway let's not get into all that actually they they are moving no the stars are all moving they'll find out 
how it is moving they will measure the radiation spectra then it can be related to the solid angle okay problem number 46 to complete the discussion let us do the ulta let us calculate the earth's temperature okay so that your understanding is complete but now one more thing is required for calculating the earth's temperature that is the reflectivity of the earth that is called the albedo okay the reflectivity is called the planetary albedo albedo means how much it reflects back i will give you the data calculate the equivalent black body temperature of the earth problem number 46 calculate the equivalent <coughs> black body temperature of the earth calculate the equivalent black body temperature of the earth assuming a planetary albedo assuming a planetary albedo of 0.3 okay open the brackets fraction of the incident solar radiation i am defining albedo open brackets fraction of the incident solar radiation that is reflected back into space fraction of the incident solar radiation that is reflected back into space without absorption fraction of the incident solar radiation that is reflected back into space without absorption close brackets assume that the earth is in radiative equilibrium assume that the earth is in radiative equilibrium okay so called planetary albedo people who are working on those presentations the planetary albedo can change if the ice keeps on melting the snow cover changes and that will lead to a feedback effect and all that snowball earth will be the opposite of that albedo is a very critical factor in the earth how much it reflects now what is radiative equilibrium radiative equilibrium means you are considering the whole let us say the whole earth is, one, uh, is at one temperature T e. now under equilibrium the rate of change of enthalpy of the earth is incoming minus outgoing the incoming is from the solar and the outgoing is basically emission okay under equilibrium temperature does not change with time ok now this 1368 1368 watts per meter square ok that is based on the projected area of the earth Lakshmi Khan that 1368 is based on the projected area of the earth what is that you have any doubt uh, so we will have to be careful so if you want to solve problem 46 okay huh? So, the radiation which is coming from the sun, okay. This 1368, this is earth is a sphere. That 1368 is based if you if you cut like this, if you cut like this, what happens? If you, if you cut like if you cut like this, what do you get? A circle, pi r squared, okay. So, the 1368 is based on pi r squared, but the emission back is based on 
4 pi r square yes please use this okay so this is incoming this is outgoing emission is based on 4 pi r e square and please take factor in the albedo okay But what will be the absorption? Absorptivity 0.7 that you have learned somewhere, no? I think I should that teach that first. You already learned it somewhere? Okay. So that funda is required now, right? Okay. Okay, hang on. So if radiation is falling on the surface. Huh? Water is also falling on the huh. not only radiation which is falling. Okay. So G incident. What can happen to this radiation if it falls on the surface? This can be reflected. Okay. This can be absorbed or this can be transmitted. there is no chance of transmission from the earth if it is glass it is possible okay so using energy balance g incident g is the normally a commonly used nomenclature for uh, re incident radiation okay g is uh, irradiation then we qualified by subscripts reflection transmission and absorption so this is equal to i'll divide by g in throughout make this one so one equal to reflectivity plus absorptivity plus transmissivity okay Transmissivity is 0 for the earth, but for the earth's atmosphere it is not 0. Okay. For an opaque surface. When tau equal to 0. Therefore, the absorption of the the absorptivity of the earth planetary absorptivity will be 1 minus 0.3. In simple English, 1 minus 0.3, 0.7 into 1,300, 1,368 watts per meter square will be absorbed for every meter square of the area. And what is the total meter square? What is the total area which is absorbing absorbing this pi r e square? But this must be equal to the emission. The emission is 4 pi r e squared into sigma t e to the power of 4. That is the energy balance. Please do it. We will complete it. We get the temperature of the earth. It is 255. 255 is the temperature of the earth. Okay.
you are happy? You are at equilibrium now, you figured it out? Hmm. Okay, let us finish this. Chaitanya, for this also the radius of the earth is not required, correct? Hmm. 4 pi r is squared uh, equal to uh, uh, 2 okay. So, the temperature of the earth is about minus, minus 18 Kelvin, okay. do not worry about the temperature in Chennai, that is something that is okay. So, overall it is about, there you, go, you also have the poles, you have got Siberia, you have got all these places, the average temperature is Assuming the earth's temperature to be 1, the average is 255. Assuming the earth's temperature is 1 is also a bad idea, but if you had to do that, it is 255. And uh, there are other assumptions. There is something uh, when you do climate predictions, they assume something called aqua planet. The aqua planet means the earth contains 100 percent water. So, there are simulations with aqua planet simulations, it is easy to do, but otherwise, you have to take 3 fourths 71 percent water, 29 percent land. Then you have to have emissivity for land, emissivity for ocean, uh, problem gets more complicated. So, first level modeling they will say aqua planet, that means everything is water, 100 percent water, and they will do the simulations. Okay. Now, this PowerPoint I want to show, just 3 minutes. Huh? Huh. Oh, it is already there, very good. So, mouse. Okay. So, these are the black body radiation curves. So, if you see, uh, this is from the book, the great book Wallace and Hobbes. Much of my material is taken from that book, Atmospheric Science and Introdu Introductory Survey. So, you see the Planck's black body dis distribution drawn side by side. So, the left curve, basically uh, the units have been, have been normalized because 255 Kelvin it cannot be so much. That should be a big mountain, this should be a hillock, right? But we have adjusted that, okay. Now, if you see, just look at the nature of the curves. So, the peak is around 0.5, that is what we saw in yesterday's class, 0.475 for the solar, it is about, uh, where is this? Uh, for the solar uh, radi incoming radiation, I mean radiation from the sun, so it is about 0.5 Kelvin. So, this is the spectrum, black body spectrum for the sun, this is the black body spectrum for the earth. Therefore, the incoming radiation is largely in the visible part or the near infrared part which is less than 4 micrometer. So, actually for the radiation from the earth, it is always in the infrared part of the spectrum. Okay. So, this is the first major difference and all these greenhouse gases do not absorb much in this part of the spectrum and they absorb a lot in the other part of the spectrum. Feel out if you do not believe me. So, this is the absorption spectrum. So, if you see this is the absorption spectrum as measured. So, at 11 kilometers at the top of the atmosphere and at ground level, at the top of the atmosphere is what is of interest to us. So, same wavelength if you see 0 0.1, 0 0.1, this is 1, 5 and this is 100. So, remember this. So, in the incoming radiation, you see the absorption is very less, but whereas in the outgoing part, outgoing part the absorption is very high. So, because of this, the greenhouse gases, so the top is basically carbon dioxide 
the bottom I mean the top is at 11 kilometers the bottom is ground level and uh, the various gases absorption are given here oxygen ozone and so on. So, you can see that there is very little absorption in this part of the spectrum where is a lot of absorption therefore, these gases mostly diatomic gases because of their electric dipole because of the particular property the nature of their properties they allow their incoming radiation incident radiation to come through whereas, they do not allow the radiation which is going back from the earth this is responsible for a continuous build up of this radiation imbalance the budget is affected the radiation budget is affected this leads to global warming and so on. Always water vapor is there water will evaporate and the water vapor is not under control it is na it is a by product of the natural hydrological cycle, but this carbon dioxide and methane are under control. So, the whole idea is to reduce this carbon dioxide so that all these stay within limits ok. So, in the next class we will go a little deeper and then uh, look at uh, the greenhouse effect and then we will have to look at the equation of transfer how radiation gets transferred in an absorbing and emitting atmosphere.